All right, so last week I created a video in the middle of the week, a little motivational video, and I called it How to Do a Lot with a Little, or How to Say a Lot with a Little. And the point of that was to create a, a video that lets you know that you don't have to know everything about theory before you can start playing music. I see a lot of people that feel like they need to know it all and that all the background information before they can start having fun with it. And that's just not the, the case. In fact, you're better off to take the little information that you do know, even if it's just a quarter or two, and start really beating it up, like looking at it and wrestling with it and trying to really understand it, you know? And so I gave a couple of examples of how to play a chord in different spots. And then I, I showed you how to take two notes and then play a very simple lead from that. But I had a lot of people asking if I could create a follow-up video. And so this video is a follow-up to what I talked about last week. Uh, you don't have to see that, you can start here. But if, if you're new to playing lead, maybe you've never played lead, or maybe you don't even know how to start playing lead, that's a very uh, easy scenario to, to fall into because there's so much information. How do you start this thing? This is a great lesson for that because we're gonna take a very simple shape, a simple square, and I'm going to show you how to find it, how to find it in the key, and then how to find it in two octaves. And from that, you're going to be able to play lots of just about anything. And I'll give some examples of that. Uh, but that's what we're going to be doing this, in this video. We're going to be talking, it's like a little mini lesson on how to get started playing lead. And those of you that have been playing for a while, this may be elementary to you. But then again, there may be a few things that you hadn't thought about. So it might be interesting just to watch, even if you already know how to do it. Um, okay, so the first thing you have to do before you can do anything is you have to know the key of the song. And I don't care if you're playing along with a buddy or if you're at a blues jam on stage with a band or if you're playing along with a jam track, it doesn't matter. You have to, the one thing, the first thing you have to do is you have to know the key of the song. If you're playing along with a jam track, the odds are that they've told you what the key is. But uh, in the, those other cases, you don't know. So the first thing that I learned to do, and I don't remember how I, how I learned this, but I took that high E string, and I would just walk up the fretboard until I found a match to my ear. So I'd play along, I'd put the song on, if, if it was an album on the radio or something, and I would just keep going until I found a match. Actually, I did a lesson on this, which is EP160, so you can reference that. It's a whole lesson with practice material if you want to deep dive on this. But that's the premise of it, is you find a match, and chances are that's the key of the song. Not always the case, but chances are. Even if it's not, you'll figure out how to find out fairly quickly. So that's the first thing is I find the, the first, the matching note, I'll assume that's the key. So let's say we landed on the fifth fret, first string. This is where you have to memorize the notes on your E string. Actually, when you memorize the notes on your high E string, you've memorized the notes on your low A string because they're both E's. But you need to at least know the, the dotted frets. You know, the, the third fret, which is a G, the fifth fret, which is an A, seventh fret is a B. You can get the sharps and flats later, but try and get all the major, uh, the, the non-accidental notes first. Um, but anyway, if we land on that fifth fret, that's an A note, which tells me we're playing in the key of A. Now here's the, here, this is the big takeaway uh, for this, uh, this square shape that I was talking about. If we look on that same fret, if I jump down to the third string, that's gonna be the top left corner of the, the box, of the square, from my vantage point, not from yours, but. For mine, that's the top left. So here's the, the fret numbers. We're gonna have five and seven on the third string, and then we're gonna have five and seven on the fourth string. That's it, that's the box. You can see the box there. It's more like a rectangle, I guess, but you can picture a little box there. Now, believe it or not, with that box, you've almost got the entire pentatonic scale. There's only one extra note in addition to that, but you can... You can start to play music with those four notes. And when I realized that, it blew my mind that it was that simple. It was just, you know, forget all the, the patterns all over the neck. I mean, you'll get to that at some point. But, but the truth is, those are four of the five notes of the, the minor pentatonic scale, which is where the blues comes from when you're playing lead, blues lead. Okay, so there's one other little extension, which I'll get to in a minute, but we're, gonna, we're just gonna focus on that for now. Now, when I mention patterns, that's something that you hear lots of players, myself included, when I'm trying to uh, explain something. We talk about pattern one or pattern two. All those patterns are, are groupings of these same notes. So like this little box here, I could play that in different positions, those same notes. There it is there, right? 
Same notes, I'm just playing them in different patterns or different boxes. That's all the pattern thing is, is it splits up the fretboard into regions. So I can hang out in a region for a while, I might slide up a little higher, but I'm really staying on those same notes. And I didn't realize, it took me years to figure out that that's what, I thought that the scale, you had all these extra notes, it's really the same notes just repurposed. So, uh, there's one other extension we're gonna add to this. Watch this. Seventh fret, fifth string. That's the extra note. Now you have the entire pentatonic scale, minor pentatonic scale. So it's one, two, three, four, five. It's those five notes. That's the minor pentatonic scale. Everything else is just a, re a repetition of that. You're playing the same notes in different spots. So I'm gonna. Get, we're not gonna worry about all that. For we can we can play the blues with this little box here and that extension. I'm gonna give you one other box though. So we're gonna take a look at. Uh, we can the best anchor point I guess that I think of here is if I look at the seventh fret, which is the corner of the box. If I go up a fret, which would be the eighth fret, and I go to the uh, second string. And I play that, and then I come up to the 10th fret, and then I do the same thing on the first string, uh, eight and 10. So 10, eight, 10, eight, one, two, those are the string numbers. Look at that. Another box, but look, look at that. It's the same box. It's played an octave higher. So now you've got this box with the extension, and you've got this box, and look, there's the extension there, which would be the ninth fret third string, it's, a, it's in the middle of the box, or rectangle. So now I've got these two octaves of the pentatonic scale, and if you can connect it back to that first note that we started with, you know, you had to find the key of the song, and I found it was an A, so now I know where my box is in reference to that A, and I know where this box is in reference to that box, you can see it's all connected. Now I have all the tools I need to be able to express myself with a lead guitar. Now here's the next exercise I want you to do, take this to the next level, is to play an A minor chord. We're gonna play a minor blues here for this. This would work with major too, by the way, if we, if we played an A major, you'd still get that minor pentatonic blues sound, but you could do it. But we're gonna play an A minor chord. In fact, the, the three chords we're gonna play, it's gonna be a one, four, five, but they're gonna be minor. So minor one is an A minor, a minor four is a D minor, and then a minor five is an E minor. If you don't want to play them here, if you can't play bar chords, play them down here. A minor, D minor, E minor. But what we're going to do is this. Play the A minor and then watch. I'm going to play it again. Now there's a bend there, I'll get to that in a minute. We're going to go to the D. D minor. Back to the A minor. We're gonna go to the E minor. Now I slid into that second box, I did it bad, but. Back to the D. Back to the A. Now, some of you are going, wait, how do you, how are you doing that? How do you know what notes you're landing on? But your ear will dictate that. And here's the thing, if you land on any of those notes, as long as you stay in that pentatonic scale, it's gonna be okay. Now, some notes sound better than others, but I could go, land on that note, or I could go, or I could go, even that note works. I can make it work, right? And if it doesn't work, you just adjust and you go to one that does. Uh, or if it, if it doesn't sound as good as it, you want it to, you just go to another note. But that's the basic premise and it's easy to practice. You don't need a jam track, at least to do this. Just A minor, D minor, E minor. And remember this, here's another little sidebar, a little takeaway, is when you're going from this box up to this box, there's a bridge, so look at the bridge. Right there, from the seventh fret to the ninth fret. I'm sliding up the bridge, right, that, remember that bridge is the bottom extension of that, of that next box. So now I've got. And I can go up the bridge or back down the bridge, but that's how I picture that. I picture that little slide connection point, connective tissue, as I've heard uh, uh, Tim Pierce say. Uh, between the seventh fret and the ninth fret, and that's what it is. And the, everything else that you're gonna hear or want to be able to do has to do with vibrato, 
bends. Now the bend, I, I did a bend before and I said I'd come back to that. So this bend here, when I'm bending, the one note I can bend in this box uh -huh. is this top, from my vantage point, it's the top right corner. So it's this one, seventh fret, third string. I can do a bend there. The other ones don't really sound as good. I mean, you could bend, I guess, on the on the uh, fifth uh, fret as well. But I, if you just to keep it simple, this is your bend, bendable note. The rest of them, don't, don't worry about it. Same then would be true on this box, All right? It's just an octave higher. So practice that. your extension, right, which was where the five chord is. So anyway, I'm making that up, obviously, and I didn't want to tab all this out because then it, this becomes a big production. But I wanted to give you that as a, just a, a, a nice little starting point for, for anybody that's trying to get going with uh, playing the lead. And so what I see is people are worrying so much about trying to learn all these patterns and learn them in all these different keys that they're missing the whole point. The point isn't the patterns. It's the point is to try and take those boxes like that, those four notes, or five notes rather, and start making music with it. And then you'll start to discover the patterns th through that, but start there with something simple like that and you can start expressing yourself. Now if you like that and you'd like a deeper dive on that, a lesson with some practice materials, I did a lesson a while ago called EP311, so you can go to activemelody.com and look up that lesson. You can just type in 311 and you'll get that uh, lesson number and that goes over the the same two boxes and but the difference is there's a jam track that goes with it Even if you don't do that just practice what I was showing you take the a minor chord Play it a few times and then plays it's kind of a call and response play that and then play a lead response to that And you'll start to hear it. It works on acoustic electric You don't have to get out effects pedals all those excuses that always jump in the way you don't have them now You've got a few notes. That's all you need to be able to express yourself. Hope you've enjoyed that. We'll see you in the next one